are these people? Council of State Media. They, I, I trust Ricky um, for news about what's going on across the pond because I really don't pay attention. And I know that there were some some riots. There was there were some folks getting out of control, you know. And what what was they happening? They had soup for their families. Mm. You know, they first of all, there's a ton of pro Palestine protests. We know that, but then there were yep. counter protests, and there were pogroms and all kinds of crap happening. So. Again, I rely on our friend Ricky to kind of give us, from the anti-imperialist perspective, what the hell's going on over there? <coughs> so he wrote this 10 days ago. So this may not be the most current, but I thought this was a good perspective. Um, he said that the genocide in Gaza and the riots in the UK have been have an obvious parallel, a hatred of Muslims and other races who are deemed inferior. Um and that's not our belief. That is the people who are inflicting this, first of all. Both the riots and the genocide are driven by supremacist ideologies that are intrinsically linked and adhered to by our leaders. Right? Our politicians are just respectable versions of the drunken yobs who wear suits and ties. Their only disagreement with these yobs is that they make fascism look bad. So he's talking about one of these biggest yobs, UK's biggest yobs, is Tommy Robinson. All right. Someone who Americans might not be familiar with, but British people sadly are. So little Tommy, whose real name is Stephen Yaxley Lennon, weird, is a guy who, <laughs> yeah. Okay. All we're saying is give peace a chance. No, he's not related to John, but he has the same spelling in his last name. But he's a guy who gets angry when rapes and violence are allegedly carried out by Muslims and immigrants, but falls silent when they're carried out by anyone else, specifically the IDF. Like, documented on camera. Yaxley yeah. Lennon has been a member of the British National Party and British Freedom Party, as well as a political advisor to the head of the UK Independence Party. Imagine being at the heart of an empire and demanding your independence. Okay. Yaxley Lennon yep. stoked up riots with false claims on social media about armed Muslims while he was lying on a beach in Cyprus, safe from the violence he was unleashing. It sounds like, what's his name, Ian Miles Chong almost. This, mm -hmm. came, this came after social media users falsely claimed a brutal murder of three girls in Southport was carried out by a Muslim. However, when it turned out the murder was born to the murderer was born to Christian parents, it was decided that this was the fault of Muslims anyway. So, it, and also the fault of anyone who doesn't hate Muslims. It's all your fault. Uh, we're smashing up the country. The fascists cried. Right. So, one interesting factoid about Gaxley Lennon, and this was something I did not know, is that his parents are Irish immigrants. So, when is he going home? This, right. is, this is one example of an immigrant failing to respect our laws, yet Yaxley Lennon is so lacking in self-awareness, he is both a British nationalist, despite what the British did to the Irish, and a white supremacist. And he also just so happens to be a Zionist. What a surprise. Little Tommy likes to wear Mossad t-shirts and says he would fight for Israel, despite not being Israeli or even Jewish. But then again... Christian Zionists outnumber, you know, Jewish Zionists worldwide. That's just U.S. Christian yep. Zionists, let alone the ones anywhere else. He just has an affinity with members of racial groups who impose themselves on other racial groups. Well, yeah. As The Guardian and other outlets have reported, Yaxley Lennon is funded by pro-Israel lobbyists in the U.S., which surely counts as interference in our democracy, which is really funny because Israel is doing the same thing here, uh, and now we're doing it uh, apparently overseas. Philadelphia-based think tank Middle East Forum is one of his biggest sponsors and has admitted spending $60,000 on demonstrations during his trial for contempt of court. Yes, he was on trial. Uh, the MEF President Daniel Pipes, 
described Jaxley Lennon as one of the people trying to sustain their civilization, trying to keep Europe Europe, trying to keep the West That's the a West. That's dog whistle. Uh-huh. He added... Another oh, dog whistle. Right. Overall, I think that their effort is sound and needed. Uh-huh. Imagine the uh -huh. lack. Imagine the lack of self-awareness it takes for a Zionist to be anti-immigration. Well, there's a lot of them here. <laughs> Jackson Lennon is reportedly also funded by pro-Israel billionaire Robert Shilman, who sits on the board of Friends okay. of Israel Defense Forces. I think you've covered Friends of the Israel Defense Forces before, as well as the Gatestone yep. Institute. And the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Not to be confused with friends of labor, friends of Israel, friends of labor Israel, or whatever they call that. Right, or the one that that's the yeah. friends of Israel that um, the one that's involved with with Diddy also. That was a different friends of Israel, right? That you you covered that one too. Yeah, but that was Diddy's friends. Yeah, it remains to be seen Old why they Jackson think Kutcher. Why they think it's important to donate to a British fascist whose only claim to fame is being the best at hating Muslims. Sounds like our Lindsey Graham. Yeah. Well, you, Sounds like a couple of politicians. Yep. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Louis, yeah. Go Louis Gohmert, too. Sure. But while you... Gohmert Pyle? While you might be forgiven for thinking this is all an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, isn't everything these days... <laughs> The above has been covered by the Times of London, uh, the Times of Israel, sorry, of all places. As much as Zionism mm. is an awful ideology, not all Zionists are stupid enough to think that an association with Stephen Yaxley Lennon is good optics. Some Zionists pretend to be moderates. Not many. Right? It's not just pro-Israel lobbyists who have an affinity with Stephen Yaxley Lennon. Many of our so-called journalists do, too. Although most would not admit to it, they certainly share his prejudices. There are some individuals who are not afraid of being linked to the UK's foremost knuckle-dragger. He's been boosted by Elon Musk on huh. Twitter. He's been supported by Trump's British ambassador and even hosted by Tucker Carlson on his show. He also was hosted by v Viva Fry recently, I saw. And I went in there and dropped this article and kept calling him Stephen Yaxley Lennon in the in the chat, dead naming him because he did, calls himself Tommy Robinson, right? Did did Tara Bull put him in that list of that block list she put out? No, he might have. He um, might have. She might have. He'd, he'd fit. Yep. Our media pretends to reject the hatred pushed by the likes of Yaxley Lennon while pushing the exact same hatred itself but doing so with fancy words and posh voices so the concerns sound reasonable. You and I, you only have to look at the glee with which Ed Balls and Kate Garraway <laughs> question the Muslim MP Zara Sultana <laughs> over the riots sweeping uh -huh. the UK. They mocked her for wanting the riots to be referred to as racist and Islamophobic rather than anti-immigration protests. Racist and Islamophobic riots would be an appropriate description, but the GMB hosts would rather disregard Islamophobia even when Muslims are being violently attacked. Many in yep. the media think that the real problem is not the racists and Islamophobes who riot, it's the Muslims and foreigners who make them do it. <laughs> uh -huh. Racists and Islamophobes have... Look what you made, Miss Do! Right? They're, like, literally, the... Unreal. Racist and Islamophobes have genuine concerns, you see. And those concerns include seeing people in their country with a darker pigment of the wrong religion. They sound like Azov Nazis yep. from Ukraine, kind of. Right? There's probably a few of those in there, too. I'm sure. Seeing as how, you know. But. Yeah. But one you know, Not to mention UK mercenaries who just came back from Israel. And Ukraine. I was going to say, sure and Ukraine. Part of yep. Well, they're the ones that right. sent Boris Johnson over to make sure there was no peace deal originally. But mm -hmm. one painful fact. I remember. I remember. One painful fact of life for respectable fascists I is remember. 
right, is that they can't admit to their fascism and must distance themselves from people they privately agree with. I remember they did this with Nigel Farage, too, initially, who, by the way, has been rehabilitated somehow. But this is part of the reason they love Zionism. Bush and all the others. Yep. While you can speculate that they're all funded by pro-Israel lobbyists or blackmailed by Mossad, many just love the opportunity to proudly boast of a supremacist ideology. This is presumably why Keir Starmer says he is Zionist without qualification, even when Zionists are committing genocide. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that going around, too. Himbo did a whole segment about um, a mayor up in, uh, up in Canada that uh, was calling for them to do it even harder. He sounds like Trump almost. The thing... Yep. The thing that people need to understand is that we're not going to end the crisis in the Middle East until we defeat the ideology called Zionism, but unlike other supremacist ideologies, we're not allowed to criticize this one. The people who don't want you to talk about Zionism are the people who don't want you to talk about Islamophobia because the moment you do, people will connect the dots. A Fresh wave of Islamophobia sweeping across the UK is exactly what the warmongers need. If they can whip up hatred of Muslims while preventing people from mentioning Islamophobia, they can weaken pro-Palestinian sentiment and avoid accountability for their war crimes. You know, I just want to mention that there are also 10% of Palestinian people that are not Muslim or that don't practice Islam, but there are Christians there and there were Jews there too. Until they pulled them yep. all out. This is why it's so ridiculous when Elon Musk, who clearly knows nothing about the UK, claims there is a two-tier system in which the so-called far left are treated much more leniently than the far right. You know, I admit that I right. clearly know nothing about this the UK. the narrative that has been happening. Right? But they're trying to mirror what's happening here, too. Where there really is no far left, first of all. Politically, um, when people protest against genocide, their critics demand the strictest possible sentences. But when fascists riot, members of Patriotic Party Reform UK are more likely to say they should be given lenient sentences. Islamophobic rioters are driven by genuine concerns, you see. Now, he says, in the UK, you can protest against a war and the police will batter you and shut down your protest And when you've done nothing wrong. In the UK, you, you can be prosecuted for toppling a slaver statue or jailed for having a banner from a bridge calling for an end to the climate crisis. Contrast this with the right. rioters. Or have a bad tweet. Right? Right. Well, he says, contrast this with the rioters who are setting fire to the hotels in the hope of burning asylum seekers alive, it's a bit fucking different, Which is fucking isn't it? Ridiculous, right? Jesus Christ, unreal. Our politicians echo the sentiments of the rioters with their scapegoating of foreigners and Muslims. We see the prime minister and members of his cabinet using anti-immigrant rhetoric to deflect from the fact that they have nothing to offer, and that's like the equivalent of our Democrats which is right on par, but they're not scapegoating and fear-mongering yeah. Muslims and foreigners. They're still not there yet, thankfully. But we see record prison sentences for peaceful protesters and lenient sentences for fascist rioters. We're sort of seeing that, although January 6th rioters and, and, and attendees certainly would fall in the second category, uh, and they're not getting lenient sentences whatsoever as well as journalists that are trying to document this. Yep. The prime minister claimed that violence wasn't as bad last night due to the police when it was actually because anti-fascists and train unionists came out in huge numbers to fend the rioters off. The prime minister instructed his MPs and councillors not to stand with anti-fascist counter-protesters because this would upset his fascist <laughs> base. Oh, come on. Right. It would also, like, make, yeah, their whole optics look bad. One moderate politician called Sarah Sackman 
use the riots as an opportunity to tell us that anti-fascists are just as bad as fascists. But she even suggested <laughs> that the anti-fascists are anti-Semitic. Of course, antiseptic. I can only assume yeah. she meant anti-Zionist, given she showed no evidence. The only evidence provided by anyone was an online image attacking Zionists that had nothing to do with the counter-protesters, which they do often. The implication of Sackman's words was only people who are halfway between fascism and anti-fascism are acceptable. Well, that's liberals, so I'd scratch a liberal and a fascist, please. <laughs> Imagine right. boasting about being half fascist at a time when fascists are tearing up the country and making non-white people terrified to leave their homes. The so-called moderates turn any conversation about fascism into criticism of anti-fascism and what they claim to be anti-Semitism, even though, of course, we know that Palestinian people are the true Semites. It's a subconscious admission that they see anti-fascism and anti-Semitism as being one and the same. It's incredible. It's, it's a roundabout way for them to defend fascism by defending Zionism. It's only acceptable offshoot, and that's not really a surprise. It's not really acceptable, but that is to them. The politicians who tell us that they don't agree with the rioters, but think they have legitimate concerns are the same politicians who say they don't agree with Israel's genocide, but then supplied weapons for 10 months anyway. It all stems from the... Billions. Yep, it all stems from the supremacist mindset. I don't know if the UK politicians gave them billions worth, but they certainly sent tons of flights and well, tons of weaponry also over there. And then you add I mean, up what they Elbit did. Elbit has certainly made plenty of products for them. So... You know. Damn, you're you're really delayed. Uh we'll have to fix that for boats. Um right. So the problem here is that the UK is is not with well, the problem with the UK is not foreigners nor the people who treat foreigners like human beings. It's the supremacists whose ideology has built empires, plundered the world, and treated white members of the working class like dirt while treating those of a different color even worse. They trick you into punching down, and when you do, you become your own worst enemy. That sounds familiar. God, that's such a great quote. We will not have a better country or yeah. a better world until we defeat supremacism in all forms and see each other as human beings. And big fan of Ricky and, and Council of State Media. This one got a decent amount of likes. 91 comments on there. All these links are going to be in the description afterwards, but you'll have to go to Substack, um, which is at IndieMediaToday.com. You, know, you can hit his Rachel Maddow sound, sound bite over there. Ah, uh, there you go. Oh, man, Barker's here. We've got the whole Canadian contingent in the house. Anna Mayer is saying, I'm glad Cop Mala has no policies. Full mask off. Guess it's honest at minimum. But except that his... Her policies are going to be whatever the bankers want them to be, and I guess that's no policy, but she does have policies. She's just, they're awful. Um, Zionism is yeah. anti-Semitism. Fred Edward is saying yes, and I, you know, that's that's true. Judaism is not Zionism. Zionism is antiseptic. Yes, it is. All right, good to see you, and thank you for all your, your support, Fred. Randy, good to see you. Those meat and cheese pies can't be called pizza. I totally agree with you. They was it was yummy and delicious, and they had sauce. It had sausage in it. Sausage. All right, Kathy Lloyd. Now you're back on Twitter as Lloyd Kathy. We caught that. Good to see you back on there. Um. All right, so we yeah. Coming soon to an echo chamber yeah. near you. No, I don't think that necessarily it's an echo chamber. You build your own echo chamber if you want. Um, Valuetainment. Oh, thank you, Himbo, for reminding me. If you do want to tip your, your live streamers, we work on a value for value system here. So if you feel like you got value out of these stories that we're bringing here, and these were interesting, different from something like you would be hearing on other channels, hopefully, um, and that um, they support independent, non-corporate entities, 
well, where are your people right here? And these people are awesome, yeah. and they've already done so, and I really appreciate that. Right up through Natalie Williams. Support independent media because we do need it more than ever. I, I keep saying it every week, and I really appreciate the people that do. And if you can't, you know, actually donate, share, and, and get more people listening to this because we're all put in a, in a bubble, and it's so hard to break out of. So anybody you can tell about it, your neighbor, the person at the coffee shop, anyone, man. Support independent media and help us grow. Thanks, everyone. Night. Keep listening to what little boats have to tell you. Good night, fam. See you in a bit. Ciao, baby. Mwah. Ciao, baby. No! We just fucking lost the stream!